I'm gonna give you a list of every reason you should do a computer science degree. Then I'm gonna give you a list of every reason you shouldn't. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the final yes or no verdict. Is computer science worth studying in 2024? If you're new here, my name's Amon. I'm a former software engineer and career coach who worked at companies like Amazon and Shopify. And in college, I did five software engineering internships and I landed a six figure full-time job right out of college. And now I help people like you land your dream job in tech. Now, the first reason you should not study computer science in 2024 is because of the tsunami of layoffs that have happened in the last two years since 2022. In recent years, the tech industry has been faced with unprecedented turmoil, which makes people question, is computer science even a stable career anymore? In 2022 alone, over 262,000 employees were laid off across all tech companies, with giants like Amazon, Google, and Meta leading the charge with significant job cuts. This trend continued into 2024, with 50,000 new jobs cut in just the first six months of the year. The numbers don't lie. Things are not looking good for job stability in software engineering. No longer the days where you can just get a job, sit back and relax, because you're probably going to join the 262,000 others who are fired in just 2023 alone. So that's the first point against doing a CS major in 2024. If the job prospects are no longer worth it, then is a CS major even worth it anymore? Well, on the flip side, if you do end up landing a job in software engineering, computer science is by far the highest paying degree out there. According to the National Association of College and Employers, the average starting salary for computer science graduates in 2023 was $76,000 a year, which is significantly higher than the starting salary of just normal college graduates, which is only $55,000 a year. CS pays almost 40% more than the average of their degree. Now, if we compare it to not even going to college, the median income of someone age 22 is only $36,000 a year. Doing a CS degree will more than double your income compared to the average person. Even better, software engineering positions not only tease an incredibly high starting salary, but they also have rapid career growth. Mid-career salaries for experienced software engineers can go from $100,000 to $200,000 a year, all the way to the $600,000 or $700,000 a year for a senior or manager software engineer. My younger brother, Adil, who studied computer science and electrical engineering at the University of California, Berkeley, landed a $600,000 per year job right out of college at age 20. Okay, and what was the range? It was significantly over 500K, is what I'll say. You'll never hear of that in any other field ever. Computer science is the only one where that can possibly happen. So rest assured, if you do get a job, you will be paid incredibly well. But on that question, with the rise of AI, will you even get a job? I mean, will artificial intelligence just take your place? The rapid advancement of AI just poses a threat to the whole field of software engineering. I mean, we're already seeing companies just replace entire departments of people with automated software, AI tools. According to a report by Gartner, AI is estimated to replace 1.8 million jobs in 2025 globally. AI can now write code, debug software, and almost create entire full stack applications with minimal human intervention. The World Economic Forum predicts that by 2025, machines will perform more than half all tasks in the workplace, up from only 29% in 2018. And this is only exponential, right? The experts are saying that we're going to see something like AGI in just three to five years. So sure, if you somehow get a job in software engineering, you might get paid incredibly well, but how long is that even going to last? With AI replacing millions of jobs globally every year, that's one point against studying computer science in college. However, if you are still sold on becoming a software engineer in 2024, a computer science major is still the best way to do it compared to a boot camp or self-study. There are a few reasons why this is the case. First of all, and I think the most important one is internships and work experience. The majority of students end up getting their first job from an internship. And even if they don't get a return offer, that internship still really helps them get their first job. I've talked to a lot of people who aren't doing a computer science degree, but still want to be software engineers. And they're all telling me 90% of employers won't even consider if you're not actively studying a computer science major for an internship. Just take a look at 90% of the job descriptions out there. They all say that they want you to be in some sort of computer science degree or major while you apply. Companies also actively recruit from most colleges out there as well. So even if you're not you know, hustling and going out there to get referrals or anything, you can just walk up to your career fair and just meet a recruiter and immediately get an interview. Career fairs are a really underused resource that nearly every single college in the country has. 
And you simply don't have access to that if you're not doing a computer science degree or you're completely outside of the system. By the way, I've just launched a free software engineering crash course. This will take you through seven lessons I wish I knew when I first started my computer science degree and will really help you nail down that software engineering job. You can get that at amalmanazar.com slash seven day engineer or the link in the description. Now, the third reason why a computer science degree is one of the best ways to get a job in tech is because it helps build a technical foundation that simply lasts a lifetime. Listen, man, I'm going to be honest, and no offense to all the bootcamp graduates out there, but a computer science degree is 99% of the time more rigorous than almost any Udemy or Skillshare or online course you can take, and usually more rigorous than any level of bootcamp out there. First of all, boot camps tend to be just way too short. I mean, like you can't learn that much information in just four to six months, or at least the majority of people can't do it. It does take a few years for these concepts to really settle in and think about it, right? Even if you're a really motivated self-study or a boot camp student, you are competing against all these other hundreds of thousands of computer science majors who have been studying the same stuff for three or four years. It's just insanely difficult to compete with that. More specifically, the rigor in courses like algorithms, operating systems, compilers, that kind of stuff you just won't find in any kind of online resource. It's just way harder to get an entry-level career in software engineering if you don't come through the computer science degree system, no matter how many great projects you have or languages you've self-studied. Now, if you're interested in getting an entry-level career in software engineering, something that can really help is a personal website where you showcase your portfolio, your resume, personal projects, work experience in a cool creative fashion. And the best way to do that is through Hostinger. Hostinger is the fastest growing hosting company, but a lot of people don't know about their AI website builder, which is a complete game changer. On screen right now, you can see Hostinger generating me an entire personal resume website in seconds. And then once it's generated, you can easily edit it using drag and drop features with no coding experience. Hostinger even has a suite of AI tools like an AI image generator, so you can easily generate an image to fit your website in seconds. It has an AI content writer, so you can write blog posts and articles in seconds to enhance your personal resume website even further. Now, you guys are programming people, so you'll appreciate how Hostinger gives you the power to host your own code-written portfolios or create them using WordPress with fully managed WordPress plans. It's simply by far the best website creation platform out there, no matter what you want to use it for. If you already have a website, Website, it takes less than 24 hours to switch that entire thing over to Hostinger, so you can spend less time worrying about your website and more time doing what you love, which is coding and building cool projects. So if you're looking to create that personal website, which will really improve your chances of landing that first interview, give Hostinger a try. It's less than $4 a month, which also includes domain name. And if you check out using the link hostinger.com slash amon10, you'll get an additional 10% off that already insanely affordable price. With the business plan, you'll get access to those AI tools I mentioned earlier, as well as a suite of performance features. Listen, man, these software engineering jobs pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's simply a no brainer to try out Hostinger to build your personal website. Thank you to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we just talked about how a computer science degree is by far the best way to break into tech. But hey, college also comes with an absurd amount of negatives. Namely, the fact that its price keeps going up year by year by year and the return is just not going up by that much. The cost of college has been skyrocketing for decades. In the 2023-2024 academic year, the average published tuition for a four-year in-state school was around $11,000 a year annually. Out-of-state students have to pay $30,000. For private universities, that cost was $41,000 a year. So in some total, certain brand name universities will charge you $200,000 plus dollars for a four-year college degree. Also, collectively, Americans owe over $1.7 trillion in student debt. That's absolutely insane. We've never seen a number that high. Now, if you did earn a ton more because of that computer science degree, sure, that debt might be worth it. But the simple fact is that that ROI is not growing as fast as the cost. Tons of students don't even end up getting jobs that need their degree in the first place. According to recent data, around 37% of graduates are employed in jobs that don't even require a college degree. And about 41% of graduates are working in a field completely unrelated to their major in the first place. College isn't just expensive. Many degree programs require somewhat useless general education classes or electives that are pretty much irrelevant if you want to become a software engineer. These classes tend to prolong the time it takes to graduate and overall inflate the cost of a degree when you simply don't need a lot of these ethnic studies, literature, or language classes. At the end of the day, they don't increase your starting salary, which is a huge mark against doing a computer science degree. Okay, on the other side of it all, why would someone pay $200,000 for a degree at a college like Harvard or NYU? Well, the answer might be obvious. It's the network. You probably heard cliches like, it's not what you know, but who you know, or 
your network is your net worth. And I'm here to tell you, it's absolutely true. I got the majority of my internships and jobs through referrals and people I knew at those companies. And that's exactly what I advise all of my students to do. Let me tell you something. You will never be in another position in your life where you'll have thousands of students who are all doing the same thing as you in all the same age range. College is the only place that will ever give you that. And because of that, college is by far the easiest place to get referrals. I mean, people are happy to help out. You have a friend who's interning at Palantir. You have another friend who's interning at Meta. Both of them are more likely to refer you than if you just DM some random Meta engineer when you graduated college. If you're doing a boot camp or God forbid you're self-studying, referrals are almost out of the question. Sure, boot camps have somewhat of a built-in network, but at the end of the day, right, it's 99% of the time just some Discord group chat where people People are occasionally posting things. Very few people are building real relationships through a bootcamp. And I don't even have to address the self-study question, right? That's going to be you in your bedroom on your laptop or with a textbook, not meeting anyone, not getting any referrals or building out your network. And beyond referrals, tons of your insider knowledge will come from other people. Just by talking to people who are currently in the internship game, I'm already picking up on all these new tricks and tactics that I didn't know about just one to two years ago. Most of what I know about tech has come originally from other people. Whether it's my younger brother, Adil, whether it's guests on my podcast like Sunny or Akash or Suresh, it's really hard to pick up that insider knowledge on your own, which is why I highly recommend, sure, listen to some podcasts, watch YouTube videos. Those are some of the best places on your own to actually gather some of this insight. But beyond that, there's no replacement to a computer science degree when it comes to your network. Finally, another reason why the people in college make a massive difference is mimetic desire. Now, mimetic desire is that feeling where if you're in an environment where a bunch of people want something, you start to also want that thing. So if you're taking classes with 30, 40, 50 computer science students who are all grinding lead code, all going for internships, there's a far more likely chance that your motivation is going to be sky high, which will really improve your chances of getting a high paying job out of college. So what's the answer here, right? I've given you all the pros and all the cons for a computer science degree. Well, as everything, the answer is it depends. Let me tell you, man, even with layoffs and the scary threat of AI, the field of software engineering is not going anywhere. First of all, we live in a technological world and with the rise of AI, that earlier scary number I mentioned, the fact that 1.8 million jobs are estimated to be replaced by AI next year, well, that same report found that AI was going to create 2.3 million jobs, which means we're going to have an increase in jobs, not just a decrease. And sure, maybe all of those jobs aren't going to be in exactly the same field, but at the end of the day, right, we're going to be AI engineers instead of software engineers. Those new 2.3 million jobs are fundamentally going to be higher technical skill jobs. Here's an analogy. Instead of writing in C or assembly, we'll be writing in Python. We'll be using AI to write extensive applications. To not get eliminated and replaced by AI, you just need to learn the AI tools that are going to be used in the future. Just stay ahead of the curve. The solution is just to be more highly skilled. Just differentiate yourself. Just continue learning, grinding, growing, and then you won't be replaced. So if you want to become a software engineer, if you want that insanely high paying starting salary, if you want that chill nine to five lifestyle with free meals and an amazing office, or if you want to work at a company like Google or Meta, I think a computer science degree is the best route for you. So a computer science degree is worth it if you're in that use case. However, if you want to be a disruptor, if you want to create the next Facebook, if you want to start a successful company, I would say don't do a computer science degree. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, tons of successful founders dropped out of college. Sure, they were already intelligent enough to get into Harvard and then drop out. But the fact of the matter is Harvard is not helping them start these big companies. You're more likely to be successful if you take that $100,000, $200,000 and just throw it into your startup and spend four years grinding at that. If you're interested in how I would get a software engineering internship in 2024, if I had to do it again, you can watch this video right here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.